and follow me as a Motorola Moto G200 and today I will show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. Now starting off I'm going to begin with the dark mode which can be found under the settings display and let's see it's right over here. Now we have the toggle to turn it on manually on and off but we can also tap on the text which will allow us to set it up as a schedule meaning it can turn on dark mode during the night time and as an example during the daytime you can have a light mode and it will do it automatically which is a really nice feature which I highly recommend utilizing. Now moving on to the next option it is the refresh rate. So we can tap on advanced in the display section and right here we should have somewhere there we go display refresh rate and it looks like it's set to 144 hertz. Now we also have the auto which will be a better option actually. So let's go back to it, uh, which uh, with auto uh, being enabled, it will use 144 hertz whenever it can, meaning as an example right here, it's going to utilize 144 hertz. But the moment you stop actually scrolling up and down where the image is still, it will switch to 60. Now this doesn't have any kind of additional fancy technology behind it, so uh, it will only drop down to 60, I believe, and it doesn't give you the benefit of like preserving battery when image is still. Some other devices do it the way that they reduce refresh rate from like 144 to something like 3 Hz. So you're getting 3 frames per second. And that drastically would increase uh, battery life. And when you're not really in the need of like high refresh rate, when you're looking at something that isn't moving like this, uh, then it's a really good way to uh, get some battery life. But here it only jumps down to 60. So uh, to finish this off with the refresh rate, if you prioritize only on battery life, then you might want to stick with 60. If you prefer to have balance of both, uh, some a little bit less battery life, uh, but still have a really nice smooth experience, go for the auto, which will uh, basically utilize both of them at the same time. And there is not really any reason to go for straight up 144 all the time. So that's just my take on this. Anyway, moving on to the next option, we have split screen, which is just an option for you to use two different apps at the same time. When you go to recent applications, like so, and tap on the icon, I will have split screen. When you tap on it, it obviously opens up the first uh, application that you split screen with on the top right here, and then you can open up some kind of other app to split screen with. Um, best use scenario for this uh, that I like to use is the YouTube on top and then browser at the bottom because when you go home it will continue to play YouTube right at the top because it's still technically open. Now it will obviously pause it when you lock the, the device so keep that in mind. And moving on to the uh, next option it's going to be attentive display. So what this will do is utilize the front facing camera to check if you're looking at the device and as long as you are, or as long as the device is detecting that you are looking at it, it won't trigger the countdown for screen timeout. So as an example, if you're reading something uh, and you have timeout on your screen set to like 30 seconds, as long as the device sees that you're looking at it, it won't start the countdown until you, for instance, put down the device and it can no longer detect your face. So to get this enabled, we're going to navigate to, I believe it was under display. There we go, attentive display. So it is under display and you can select it. As you can see, it gives you a little animation right here, how it functions, though this animation is kind of crap, let's be honest. So we can enable it right here and now obviously it wants access to your camera because it will use it to look for your face. So if that is something that you don't feel comfortable with, uh, I guess this option probably isn't for you. But for everybody else that just wants to utilize this, select that you allow, turn it on and there we go. It is now on and additionally what i would recommend you to do right now is change the screen timeout to probably something as low as you can get right now it's set to 30 damn minutes so it might be a little bit excessive but you can set it to be 15 and after 15 seconds it would normally lock assuming you're not looking at the device now for me yep it's gonna time out just because uh, it actually doesn't see my face i'm looking at the monitor that is at the front and uh, the phone is laying flat so it cannot actually see me uh, but for 
basically every kind of use scenario where you actually are looking at the device like this it shouldn't uh, put it to sleep now I'm uncertain if it actually detects where you if you actually are looking at the device or if it's just like if it can see your face so that's something that you need to test out anyway moving on to the next and also last option it's going to be gesture navigation as you can see i've been using buttons for this entire video and those are fairly outdated i do like my gestures so to enable them all you need to do is go into the system then gesture gestures there we go and then system navigation and you'll find your gesture navigation right over here as you can see it turns off the buttons and substitutes for this bar at the bottom which you can swipe up to go home swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe from sides to go back there we go i think the the thickness of the glass doesn't actually allow me to to get it for some reason it works from the other side uh yeah i think it's just a fault of the glass itself although it works fine here so yeah uh, anyway, this would conclude all the tweaks and the tricks I want to share. And if you found them helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.